Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Emerald the Quilter, and today is a day I have been looking forward to a very long time. I am making a scrappy quilt using one of the patterns from the Perfect Five Quilts book by It's So Emma. In all of the previous quilts, I've tried to stay matchy-matchy and use specific designer lines, but for the Pizzelle quilt, this one here, I'm using my leftover charms. And I have a ton of charms left over that I can make the cutest scrappy quilt. So let's get started. So here is my basket of charm packs. And if you were with me since the very beginning of this playlist, you know that um, I have way more charm packs than I did. Um, and that's because I've had to add a few for some of the upcoming Perfect Five quilts. Like for example, this one here, beautiful. I can't wait to use this. This is called Honey and Lavender by Dub Strain and we're gonna be making a quilt with this fabric line and then a couple others that I got from vacation and whatnot. So the first thing that we're going to do is take out these scrappy charms, which I've kept in the back. So you can see they're here. And I have saved these like um, little cardboard pieces because it helps keep everything um, flat and straight. And then I also have this bag of charms that I got at retreat. So I'm going to need 32 of darks and then 32 of lights. The nice thing is that I've pretty much saved all of my charms. They have not gone into my scrap bas basket because I knew that I was gonna be doing something with them. And so this process is going to be pretty easy. Now it is scrappy. The thing that I have to make sure of is that the fabrics that I put together at least look nice together. So um, I want to make sure that one fabric um, does stand out next to the other um, and I don't want anything that is too blendy. So I'm just going to put my lights on this side and my darks over here. I don't even know what to consider that one. It's kind of in the middle, isn't it? So I've got lots of pretty, lots of pretty charms. And many of these are from lines that you've never seen before because of course I have been quilting for years. So um, yeah, this is like the perfect project and I'm so glad that I had all of my charms ready. And I think most of these are lights now. That one is hard to pick what it is. So I definitely have way more than I need for lights. Look at that. And then I might have to get some more definitely from this bag here for darks. So I'm just going to start counting because I know I need 32. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, I have exactly enough. So I'm going to set the ones I know I do not want in my quilt aside. So like this one, I don't want. And I think that These two kitties, their faces might get chopped off. Um, you know, and I don't want that for this quilt. So they're going to 
go back into my charm basket charm pack basket these look good I don't know about this gray one maybe I should just leave them in there you know he has to get used at some point and then this one here do I want to use that one I don't think so I don't think I want to use that one it's the motif on it it's just it's not that it's too large but it's just too blank so I've got a nice selection here. I'm going to recount them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, okay, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now this is a lot of red, so I don't think I want to use all of these reds. They're going to have to, you know, be set aside for another day. Okay, let's see. I'll leave two of those, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put these away. Eight. Nine. All of these are Christmas, it looks like. 10 and then we need two more for a total of 32. These batiks are gorgeous. I don't think I want to use these batiks. I'm going to keep that one. There's 10. I don't want to use these batiks. Let's see. We can use a one and use something different. All this Christmas fabric. Maybe I'll put, let's see, the Christmas lights. That'd be funny to have just one random Christmas light. <laughs> decisions, decisions. I don't want to use these batiks and I don't want Christmas lights. So you know what? I'm going to put this guy in. He's the safest bet. There. So I have 32. Now what I need to do is match up these 32 with these. And I have way more of these than I need. So I'm just going to lay them out and then I'll bring you back. You can see I've laid out lots of the light charm squares and it's not all of them but it's enough for me to just start picking and choosing like for example where do I want this one paired with do I want it with here 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 you know and so I'm just going to start laying them down like I think this combination is a fun combination and I all I do is this Okay, so that lets me know, and I'll lay it with the uh, dark side, wrong side facing up. Um, that way I know that that one's done. And then I can pick like, where do I want my dolphin to go? I think the dolphin would look really pretty with this fabric because this one is more solid and then this one's very busy. So I will put that there. And that's how I'm going to start. And this is going to work for both methods. So whether you want to use the traditional way or the, um, the paper way, triangle paper, um, both methods will be fine with this. And let's see, where do I want this one to go? I think this would probably be really cute with this you know and I don't need to spend too much time on it um, debating because it's a scrappy quilt right it's meant to be fun 
and this fabric is kind of boring. I hope he doesn't get too chopped off. So maybe I'll save him for later. Where do I want this guy to go? Hmm. And put him off to the side. And then this blue would definitely look really pretty with this. And so that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna lay them all out, picking, you know, pairs one at a time. I need 32 total. Probably with none of these for now. This one, I love the gold on this. Love it, love it. I think this is really pretty right here. And then that one. I'm not so sure. And got some stripes. Ooh, this is an interesting combination. And then the solid green one would look nice with this flowers, of course. That was an easy one to pair. And then this one, I think with this blue fig tree charm would look nice. I know, sorry, you couldn't see that. Let me bring it over. I'm just happily matching fabric, so. There we go. Just like that. And what about this purple? It's a bright purple. I think what this would be cool. I know this has purple on it, but it's more muted. It's just gonna be interesting. And then Fig Tree with Lori Holt, I think looks nice. So I've got this combo here. And in case you were wondering, how did I select my lights? Well, I took out all the lights that were almost like white on whites or just the tiniest little motif on there. So like I took those out. And I don't want these in this particular quilt because I want it to be definitely a little bit more busy so this one I think would look nice here. And we'll put this one here. And let's see. This one can go here. And I need something for this guy. I think I'm gonna put orange with him because that's a interesting contrast. So I've got these that need some matching. That's an easy one. And don't wanna put stripes with stripes. So green right here and don't want to put another red there. Maybe this gray. You know, I don't like this one, so I'm going to remove him. And instead, I'm going to match something that I have with these. This one goes. This looks interesting. I think this one will be okay. And then I need something for over here. There we go. Okay, now let me just, to fill in this spot, I'm gonna add this little guy and just pick something that will go nicely like this. 
It's interesting. There we go. Now what I have here is done. This is what, six by four, 24. So, you know, a good chunk of my fabrics have been selected. And what I need now is my friction pen or a pencil. And all I'm going to do is take my ruler and match from one, this is a little closer, one corner to the other corner on my ruler and I'm going to draw a line. And I can add a pin here and here or not, whatever is easy for you. And I'm going to sew along a quarter inch away from the right side and a quarter inch away from the left side. I pressed them all flat and I trimmed them. I got lots of these little tiny perforated edges cut away. And because there is sashing, I did want to make sure that my sashing is gonna match the size of my blocks. This is the ruler that I used and you see that it has a crisscross um, in black. And so I just laid the black line across the seam line to help make sure that I was cutting it straight. And of course, having a rotary um, cutting mat that rotates is really helpful. Now I'm gonna show you how to use triangle paper to make your half square triangles. I know I've showed you how to use them before, but just in case you're new, these are really handy. So for this particular quilt, I'm using H400 and I'm just going to need one cut. So I open the roll and what you have to do is cut right on the line. So precision with paper only works when you cut and sew on the lines. Um, and I find that to be a little bit less tedious than having to um, sew on a drawn line and then trimming. And I just prefer the paper more. Um, than the traditional way. So this is how I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to cut right down here. And this is what one square looks like and they're perfect for charm packs. What you'll do is make sure that these are lined up just right. And you can see that this line on the side goes, um, there's like an edge of like a border to it. That's okay, you ignore it and you leave just a little bit of fabric all around these three sides. And you don't worry about this one because if you were to fold it back, you would see that there's still a little bit of fabric behind there. Now you're going to need your pins and I have my little mouse. I made him, he's so cute. So I made this mouse after seeing one, um, actually a lot of mice at the International Quilt Festival a few years ago and I had regretted not buying one that I ended up designing my own. <laughs> and I don't even know if it's exactly the same or not, but I love my little mouse. It has like crushed walnut shells in it and there's an interfacing so um, it's kind of sturdy. I just love him. Now, that these are ready. You always keep your fabrics flat. I'm going to take these to the sewing machine and with a one and a half stitch, I'm going to stitch on these lines here. You can see I stitched them down and this is the point where I take out the pins and I just return them. And to trim, I like to trim around the perimeter first and then on the diagonal line. Thank you. 
So there's one charm. Now to rip off the paper, I just put my fingernail at the first stitch in the corner right here and I slowly tear it away starting from the middle on the short side of the seam and I just repeat this process for all of them. Pretty satisfying ripping off the paper. And what's nice about doing it this way is that once you open your half square triangles, they're all ready to size. There is no trimming because you've, you've already done that ahead of time. The only thing that we need to do is cut these little corners off. So I have my scissors. And I'm just going to cut those on a right angle. And I take these little ears off with all of them. And we are ready for the reveal. I'm gonna open this. There it is. So you see, you get the same results. It's just a different journey. So pick the way that you like, and you're going to need 64 half square triangles total before we move on to the next step. Now I'm ready for the next step. And you may remember these fabrics from my previous quilt with the Florida prints. And I had saved these. They were not square. They were some kind of rectangle and I trimmed them down. So I've been saving them for this project and I can't wait to use them. So I'm going to bring these back out because for our pattern, what we need to do is make sure that they're all on the screen for you. Start laying which ones I want to go where. So the pattern is going to be, once it's fully open, it's gonna be like this on one side. And I'll just grab something else like this on the other. And so each unit will get two of these smaller squares and what I need to do is audition them. So I know that I don't want to use any more um, lights because these are just, I don't know, I think too plain, but I think this one would be really nice here. And whatever side of the fabric you want flipped over, you want to place that towards the center. So my sun is gonna get chopped off. But if I wanted my sun to show, then I would have my sun facing the center. That way when it's flipped over, it shows up. But I already have some orange here. So I'm just gonna go like this. And I'm gonna pin just like that. That way I can move it to the sewing machine and I won't have any issues. And I'll repeat this step for all of the blocks. And this one's gonna go here. Let me just do some for you. Get different colors. It's a nice purple. And I am matching up my corners here. Now you could draw a line. So if you were doing 
Um, so in the traditional way, you know, to make these units, you drew a line, you could draw a line here too, or you could do what I do, which is use diagonal seam tape. <laughs> so I use diagonal seam tape for things like this. And I'm gonna put this one here. That way there is no line drawing required. And definitely something different. Ooh, black would be nice here. Now you're going to need um, 64 for this side and 64 for that side. So if my math is right, it's about 136, something like that. 130, 130-something. 130 okay. I did not calculate it. This one's ready to go. So is this one. And now I just need to finish looking for here. I think these wings would be pretty cool. Just peeking through. So I'm not gonna have enough of these squares, which means I'm going to have to make some. And I did have a few charms left over that I can cut, and I can also go into my scrap bins to cut some more. So that's what I'm gonna do, because I don't want to just have these all be from the same line. Um, I'm gonna stop there. And once I am all set up, I will bring you to the sewing machine with me. I'm all set up and you can see that I picked out some different scraps. These scraps were um, actually pulled from another project that I'm working on. So I'm making one of the quilts from the Scrappiness is Happiness um, book by Lori Holt. And I already had some two and a half inch squares and it's like, well, let me just get some of those because I think I had too many from there anyways. I have my diagonal seam tape and I will have a link of this down below. I get it from Amazon. And I'm just going to sew from this corner to here on all of them. And the pins I used help um, keep it all in place as I move from table to table and on both sides. Now I think of all the quilts that we've made so far, this one is the most beginner friendly because it's um, just sewing from one corner to the next a total of three times per unit. And so with repetition, you get really good at it. You can make as many as you want. And I was thinking, well, this is going to be, um, you know, this quilt is not going to be really big. I could always add some more blocks if I wanted to make it a whole lot bigger. But I will see how it turns out once I lay it on my design wall. This could be a really great scrap buster if you just keep making more and more and more because it's so simple and so quick to make. This one is a little bit crooked, so I have to just scoot it over. Since that's the main thing to pay attention to with this quilt, that you're sewing from one corner to the next in a straight line, um, if you do it well, you won't have any problems. And in the last two projects that I was left with an abundance of um, cutaways, I made a bonus project. For this one, because we just did a bonus project, I'm going to 
um, skip doing a bonus project video. I may change my mind, but for now, um, especially because these are scrappy and I'm kind of at a loss as what I would even make with scrappy half square triangles. Maybe you guys have some ideas, but I think for now it will be just fine setting them aside being that I am only about halfway through the book. So I think this one, this particular quilt will make me halfway through the perfect five quilts book um, or almost, I'll have to go back and check. I know it's been a while since we've checked off on the table of contents. That's what I've been using as my checklist. So I will have to look at that. And I have started looking at what I'm going to do for background fabric. So I've made two already with some darker fabrics and I was like, oh, maybe I should do that again. And I have this solid green and it's like, well, I don't know if the green would go with everything. So I think I'm gonna go with like a cream background. And I pulled a couple different creams that just so happened to go nicely with two big tree prints that I have that maybe I would like to use as borders. So as opposed to this being just completely solid background with in the sashing and in the borders, maybe just solid sashing and some more interesting borders. So I put some and we'll take a look at those. I'm on the last seam now. And I'm gonna get my rotary cutter and my ruler to show you what to do next. What I'm doing to finish my block is separating them and removing the pins. Chain piecing helps me get this done very fast and that's how I sew most of my quilts. As you've probably seen before, and you do not want to lose your pins because you're going to need a lot of them. To finish this, I'm going to trim or cut this away. So I'll have my cutaways and I'm going to use my dotted line on my ruler to get a quarter inch seam. And I am paying attention that it is a quarter inch because I do want to sew these. I'm just not going to put something together right now. There. Now, We press this open, and this is what your finished block looks like. It's so precious. It's simple, it's easy to make, and you're gonna repeat this 63 more times. These blocks came out so cute. They are adorable. I am always, a little nervous making scrappy quilts, but then when you finally get a finished product, it's like, yay, these are so cute. These are awesome. And I think, yeah, I am not going wrong with using a solid background with this because it's just going to put the focus on the blocks. And I don't know, maybe I don't even need a border. So let me show you what I have. This particular background fabric, of course it's cream, but it's almost like less yellow, a little bit more gray. This one is a little bit more yellow and you can kind of tell the difference there. You see, I can tell on the screen. So if I go with this more creamy, more yellow version, I would probably see if I have enough to do something with 
this, and I might not have enough. Hmm, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. This All Hallows Eve um, fabric, also fig tree, so, you know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'd have to cut it and measure it up. And I think um, Quilters Emporium still carries this, so it's not like, you know, it's out of the question. If I go with this one, I would use this fig tree border. So let me lay, actually, let me scoot these in a little bit. I'll just make two columns for you so that you can see what one border looks like with this one. And I use this fabric with the Sparkles and Cream block of the month. So I would do that or I would do this. Which one do you guys think looks the best? Little Flowers or All Hallows Eve? So whatever you guys think looks the best is what I will go with because I have some time. I still need to make a lot more of these blocks. I can't wait to see which border you guys think would look best and I hope you had just as much fun as I did making this cute little block. This could be the perfect scrap buster if you just want to make more and more and more and if you do what Lori Holt does which is take her scraps and then chop them into different size squares you could get your charm pack size squares and then make lots of these. That would be awesome like oh this, this project could be addicting. I may make more. We will see, you know, how it goes in the next week or so. Um, but yes, please let me know which border do you like, the little flowers or All Hallows Eve. And remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.